Hey, hello everyone. I'm City of Las Vegas Communications Director David Riglin. Thanks so much for joining us for Access City Council. Coming up on this show, good news for anyone out there who's joined the pickleball craze. And while you're out there enjoying everything our city has to offer, some reminders on how to stay safe this summer. We'll have a special guest from Las Vegas Fire and Rescue later on in the program. We're so glad that she'll be joining us. In the meantime, here to talk about all of these things and so much more is the councilwoman who represents Ward 3. You know who it is. It's Olivia Diaz. Councilwoman, welcome back. How are you? It's great to be here. Um, it's good to know that our kiddos made it through their school year. There's so many graduations that have happened and transpired. Um, so it's just a good day overall. Yeah, a, a summer is unofficially here, but it's f officially fast approaching too. So. Absolutely. Well, you were born and raised in Ward 3. You know yes. this area very well. For those of you out there not exactly sure where Ward 3 is located, well, don't worry. We're going to show you right here on the map. Basically, it's the east side of the city of Las Vegas, but it incorporates our downtown. You've got the Arts District, and you've also got the finger that extends west of I-15 there now. That's where Area 15 is, so you've got all the cool Palace things. Area 15, Station, yeah. Clark High School. Yeah, I have a happening ward for it, sure. Exactly, very cool stuff there. Uh, all the, I'm all a little the... biased. It's the best <laughs> ward in the city, but what am it's I going to say? <laughs> and, you know, Councilwoman, uh, we talked a lot last summer. We had a hard time opening our pools because we didn't have enough lifeguards. This year, different story. Crisis averted. Yeah, and, crisis uh, averted. Thank you to those who've come to I work. I want to say uh, thank you to our Parks and Rec exactly. team who were putting out the call to lifeguard and I know that my office and myself anytime we were at a school we were asking you have a swim team can you send them our way do you think they need employment opportunities just think that fostering that connection between the schools and their swim teams to come and help us lifeguard is a perfect fit so we're so so relieved that we have them this year open and accessible and available to our community. Thank goodness. And to help make sure that everyone stays safe around the water this summer. I love this. You posted this on Facebook. You said our children's safety is our number one priority. This summer, our city pools will be offering free swim lessons, everyone, thanks to a generous donation from Float Like a Duck water safety program. Thank you to Councilwoman Victoria Seaman, our Las Vegas Fire and Rescue, Paragon Pools Las Vegas, and Lifeguard of the Week Jackson, who you're going to see, for celebrating this contribution to help and helping bring awareness to the importance of water safety. We don't want anyone, anyone having a tragedy around the water this summer. Absolutely, David. So we're just so thankful for um, this partnership with Float Like a Duck because it does allow us to provide swim lessons to families and uh, some families that otherwise would not be able to afford them uh, because exactly. things are getting tighter and tighter in our households and the economies of our homes. And um, at this announcement, as you can appreciate from uh, the video, uh, we had um, Jackson come with his family and Jackson uh, was there to help us highlight how life-saving it is to know how to swim because last summer Jackson had to rescue his two-year-old brother from their own pool. That is Jackson. Uh, that's everyone. Jackson yep. and uh, his brother took a spell in. Mom had oh. left just ever so briefly to get something from the house and Jackson didn't hesitate and acted like a true hero. Wow. He plunged in there and was the lifeguard of his uh, home, house, home's pool and was a lifesaver that day. Wow. And so we can't emphasize how important it is for our kids to know how to swim. A hero before the age of 10. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good for him. And thank, thank goodness it all turned out the way it did. That's great. And thank you for that donation. That's going to make a huge difference. And Paragon people. Pool yeah. said if yeah. there are as a demand in the ward and we run out of the funds that they are more than happy to continue to for support them. this cause. So. Um, as soon as we figure out how the program is going to be structured and um, offered, then we will be putting that call out for people to sign up for yeah, it. Come get those free lessons. Yes. That's great. And then, uh, Councilman, uh, did you know pickleball is a big thing? Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, just uh, because just, just our likely. now <laughs> Lieutenant Governor <laughs> Stavros Anthony um, Boy, was he really started the something champion here, didn't he? here oh, at the city of Las Vegas, uh, and he has started the pickleball craze. But I'm so happy that now yeah. we've caught some of the fever in Ward 3. Yeah. And um, we were doing a park walkthrough not too long ago with uh, Steve Ford. And we identified these shuffleboard courts that yeah, look not, pretty pristine. Yeah, not a lot pristine. of shuffleboard these days. And I was yeah, like, yeah. so are we really activating this space here? Do people really program it for shuffleboard uh, tournaments? And they're like, no. So uh, then 
Yeah. We thought, why not bring pickleball courts to Ward 3? Yeah, you posted this on Facebook. You, this is great. You said, thank you to everyone who came out to the ribbon cutting of the new pickleball courts at Justice Myron E. Levitt JC Community Park. Your enthusiasm and participation were truly appreciated. A special shout out to Grant Garcia and the Inspiring Children Foundation for their incredible support. I'd also like to express our sincere gratitude to the Consulate of Mexico in Las Vegas for their participation in Bi-National Sports Week. So we were calling everyone to come out and help us uh, with the event and so Grant Garcia and his foundation of amazing youth came out and gave us the clinics and taught us how to dink the ball, how <laughs> yeah, to right, serve right. the ball, Stay what, out of the kitchen. what the rules <laughs> yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you've yeah. been playing some pickleball because you know some of these terms. So um, it was really exciting to see many residents, some of the younger kiddos in our community come out and get excited about playing pickleball. And I'm just so happy that this is one of many amenities that we as a city have been striving to bring uh, more and more into our park. So now we have four pickleball parks at Myron E. Levitt JC Park, but then also um, we are in the process of updating um, the skate bar, the skate park out of Freedom oh. and the bathrooms. And so we also recently added a dog area, dog park area to Freedom Park. Wow. So uh, just so folks know, when you're messaging us on um, our social media channels, we are taking note of what you are suggesting or recommending. And when yep. we can take action, we move the needle for you all. Uh, Stewart Place Park is also receiving some TLCs with the playground need some updates and the lighting and the That's area great. also being bolstered and Arroyo Vista Park will be our very first equestrian friendly yeah. theme park. Um, it's coming along. It, we would have thought that it would have been open by now but it, we hit some bumps in the road with that one. Where is that councilman exactly? Arroyo Vista Park is right across from um, Robeson Middle School oh, okay. Okay. off yeah. of Harris. Yeah. Um, between Washington and Bonanza-ish, uh -huh. that's kind of where it's very nice adjacent. Trail to ride along there. It's very yeah, adjacent yeah. the wash, yeah, and yeah. that's why Follow it's called Arroyo Vista See? because it's the view of the, the wash. View of the yeah. wash. <laughs> so very good. That's very cool. Um, and congratulations. That's a lot of improvements on your parks yeah. too. It's, uh, it means they're getting a lot of use. That's good. Yes. And then, Councilman, this is great too. Uh, there was a facility called Betterment. Um, this was an operation, uh, county, city, uh, but what I love about it, it's the old Safari Motel, if everybody remembers Saf the Safari on East Fremont, it's been renovated and turned into uh, basically bridge housing, yeah, right? Yeah, it's transitional bridge housing and we can't leave U.S. vets out of the equation. Mm -hmm. U.S. vets uh, are the ones that are charged with uh, the operations, the daily operations on this facility. And our hope is that some of our courtyard folks um, get then uh, placed here so that then they can be given the skill sets and the support, whether it's a social worker that sees other areas they need treatment or um, need help in, Maybe they need to just be given some skills for uh, employment opportunities. So we're trying to use the Betterment community as a place where people will be triaged, people will be supported, and people will be helped to then uh, be back on the pathway of self-sufficiency and uh, re-employment. And so that's basically the goal is to stabilize someone to bring all of the resources needed for that stabilization and then hopefully get them on that pathway of a job because we know that job brings resources and then from there maybe they could be placed in a more long-term uh, living situation and then just keep uh, repeating the cycle with many, many more. So um, awesome. That's great. You know, it's uh, so important because when people are going through whatever it might be, uh, we've found certainly history's taught us if you just turn people loose and say, well, good luck out there now, doesn't necessarily have a, a positive ending. No. But when you can help people transition from one thing to the next, whatever it might be. So yeah, yeah. what they're looking to provide this space for 90 days and about 50 clients at yep. a time. And so um, we know that uh, wraparound services are huge uh, in order for someone to be successful, especially for our homeless community that have been in the streets for some time. You can't just, like you said, David, take them from living in the streets and then expect that they'll be able to right. keep right. um, their own dwelling space. Right. So sometimes that's why the supportive services are needed and that's why I think a betterment community is an important first step 
in this space and hopefully we'll find that they're very successful at doing it. They kind of um, know the best practices and then hopefully it could be replicated valley wide so that these spaces are available everywhere um, and to provide more of the support to the folks that need it. Boy, it turned out beautifully. The old safari uh, looks great. It looks like my it, favorite part is the pavers. Uh, yeah, out there in the parking yeah. lot, very nice. But they yeah. didn't they didn't skimp on anything. There turned yeah. out beautifully. So the so. county was involved, the yeah. city was involved, and U.S. Vets is the one taking the lead on this one. Well, that's good for them, and is, it's operating now. I take it. Yes, up and running. So it is up and running. Very good. Well, uh, Councilwoman, it's it's good. It's it's good that uh, the the old safari has uh, a second a second life. A second too, life, you know, and it's it's making a, a great very important. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, uh, we need to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to have some great summer tips from our Las Vegas Fire and Rescue Department. So please stay with us. Me llamo Raquel Mendoza, y esta es mi vida. Mis hijos están envueltos en muchas actividades. Eso requiere mucho estrés y correr para acá y para allá. A veces mi familia necesita un escape. Este lugar trae mucha paz y hay mucha calma, mucha naturaleza. Quiero regresar con mi familia más seguido. Encuentra el bosque más cercano en descubreelbosque.org. El bosque, más cerca de lo que crees. ¿Qué tan preparada estaría tu familia de un incendio forestal llamar a tu puerta? ¿O una inundación? ¿O un temblor? No puedes desaparecer un desastre natural. Por eso es importante ir ahora a listo.gov. Tiene las herramientas y consejos que necesitas para hacer un plan de emergencia con tu familia. Así que si el desastre llama, Vamos. estarás listo para proteger a tu familia. Ah, es solo la pizza. Sí. Haz un plan hoy. Welcome back, everyone. Melanie Denon joins us now. She is from Las Vegas Fire and Rescue. She's our public education coordinator there. Melanie, it's always a pleasure to have you on. We Thank are you. talking summer safety uh, around the water, around the heat. Councilman, I know every summer there's something, there's always a tragedy. And we, we have these warnings, but we just wish more people would actually take them to heart, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, sometimes we're li living very busy lives and we're not thinking, but it's about being present, right, in the moment and making sure that we're taking all uh, the precautions that we can as parents, as grandparents. Uh, I think it does take the village sometimes to keep all of our children safe. And so May was National Water Safety Month, right. uh, but we have Melanie here um, who is very, very committed to our community. I want to thank her because she really does care about our kids, about our seniors, about everyone. And so she's here <laughs> to give us some cool tips on how to have the best yeah. summer possible because it's never fun when you have a tragedy oh, no. or a loss in your family that could right. have been prevented. Yes. Well, let's start with the water. You know, yes. it seems like that's the most dangerous place often in the summer months uh, yeah. is going to be around the pool, around the lake, whatever it might be. Yes. Why don't we begin there? Yes. And in water safety, Safety is so important because we've seen in the last three years an upward trend in submersion incidents, fatal and non-fatal. Um, since 2020, it's gone up by 10 incidents every single year. We really? had 45 last year. And the majority of those deaths are children 14 and under. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important for parents, you know, to learn the ABCDs of drowning prevention and that the first one is adult supervision. Yeah. You need to have eyes on your kids at all times. You know, you have a water watcher, which yeah. is like a designated driver for your pool. They're right. not on electronics. They're not drinking alcohol. They are like your lifeguard paying attention. Yeah. You know, um, if you have small children, you do need barriers around your pool. Um, to keep them out. They make a gates, pool gates that are alarmed the, as well. The, that's the B, that's right? That's the B. C is classes, mm -hmm. yeah. swim, swim lessons. Swim lessons are We have huge. free ones now, you know, and that's we right. Do, we mm -hmm. do have free swim lessons um, through the city of Las Vegas. Right. Um, and um, also CPR classes for parents. Yeah. You never know when you're going to need it, especially on, with children. Um, and D is for devices. You know, if kids cannot swim on their own, any kind of inflatable water wing is not good. They need to be the kind made out of foam, the same material uh -huh. as a, a life jacket. Because if it, the, the inflatable gets punctured, mm -hmm. you no longer have that float. Right, that's not so going to happen do, with that. So they yeah, do yeah. make some that go across their chest, and they're just water wings with that's foam. True. So even if you stab it or it gets punctured, it still provides them with flotation. Yeah. And so learning all of those things, it's, it's really important, but the most thing is parental supervision. Yeah, um, it's the same thing in, in the bathtub. 
you know, we recently had a toddler that drowned in a bathtub when the mom left the room for two minutes to answer the phone. Mm -hmm. um, we've had children drown in coolers. Um, anything that can hold an inch of water. An so inch of water. An inch of water is all it takes um, to submerge their nose in their mouth. Um, drowning is a, a silent killer. They can't scream out for help. Um, you don't hear them flailing underneath the water. Um, so it's not like you see in, on TV or in the movies. Um, and so same thing with going to the lake. You know, if your children yeah. are, you need to watch your children, especially at the lake. It's a lot bigger than a pool. Um, and children can move farther if they're on any kind of inflatable um, a raft or, you know, a floating uh, mat. You need to tether them to the shore. You need to tie them, anchor them, so that way when the wind kicks up, it doesn't blow them out into yeah. the middle of the lake, where unfortunately children do drown every year. Yeah. So adult supervision is just the number one thing, along with the other the B, C, and D, A is, A is the most important when it comes to water safety. Adult and Melanie, we were talking before we went on the air also to uh, a lot of scuba diving going on out mm -hmm. there that you don't really think about, but uh, yeah. boaters need to be aware of that. Those, uh, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of any kind of, you know, any kind of watercraft, whether you're in a boat, a jet ski, um, even paddle boards or kayaks, you know, a lot of the lake, the, the little coves and stuff are used for scuba divers. Um, we have a huge scuba diving community here in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. uh, shockingly in the desert, yeah. but in between, you know, dive seasons, um, um, a lot of divers use the lake to keep their skills up for practice, for training. Um, and if you see that little red and white flag floating, it's required by law for divers to have the dive flag. If you see that, you need to stay like 50 to 100 feet away from that area because you don't know how many divers are under the water. You can't always see the bubbles. Um, and divers have been hit even by a paddle from a kayak or a paddle board. Wow. Um, and so, you know, we don't know how deep they are or how shallow. So it's just something for people to be aware of um, both on top and under the water. There's activities going on in both places. So, Of course, Councilwoman, too, we know this firsthand. Uh, summer here gets awfully hot, and so it the does. heat is obviously something to be concerned with. Especially, too, Melanie, it seems like heat we've stroke. gone from fairly nice weather, all of a sudden it just gets hot like <laughs> yes. that, and that transition sometimes catches us by surprise. Well, even right. when you go into your car to drive it, right, you're right. like, ah! It yeah, you know? right, right. <laughs> feels like an oven in yeah, there. Yeah, right. yeah. So what that what does that mean? We have to even be more present about what's in our vehicles and what we need to bring out of our vehicles. Right. We, because we also have kept hearing about the number of incidents where parents forget their children inside or yeah. a, a furry mm -hmm. um, part of the family, a, a dog yeah. or a pet, and obviously these. Uh, temperatures are something that can uh, be very, very yes. dangerous for our kiddos and our yeah. pets. Even when the temperatures are in the mid to high 70s, it can get over 100 degrees in your car. Just because the sun, you know, the, the glass, and the, it holds the heat in and it magnifies the heat. And so if it's, you know, 80s or above, you shouldn't leave a pet or a child in a car. Um, a lot of times, we, we're so busy now. You know, we have so many things going on. People are working from home, working remotely sometimes. Everybody's checking emails on their phone and do, just everybody's yeah. just busy. You're constantly getting texts and, and yes. emails. Or yeah. you're yeah. thinking of your shopping list or, right. you know, um, and so it, it happens. And the majority of times a child is left in the car, it's an accident. It's not on purpose. Um, so one of the things that's really good is take something that you cannot leave your car without. So take your flip-flop off and put it on the back seat next to your car seat where your child is. So that way when you get out of your car, <laughs> you, have to open, you have to open the back door to get your flip-flop. Or for women, put your purse, purse back there. You shouldn't be driving with your phone anyway, so leave your cell phone in the back seat yeah. Yeah. with your purse. So if you have to, when you get out of the car, you need your purse. If you start to walk into the store and realize you don't have it, you're going to go back and get it. Yeah. And it's the same thing with pets as well. A lot of stores now will allow you to bring pets with you. Um, but the thing that people forget, too, is the sidewalk and the asphalt gets extremely yeah. hot. Yeah, yeah. Their paws. And their paws do burn. So if it is, you know, 80, 90 degrees, that sidewalk and that asphalt has been absorbing that yeah. heat for hours, and it's hot. Um, and their paws, and that's where they sweat from as well. So if you burn their paws, they can't sweat like they used to normally to regulate their body heat. So if you're going to bring your pet outside, you know, early morning when it's cool or later at night, because it does take time after the sun goes down for the asphalt and the concrete to cool down, it does, it does retain some of the heat. 
Get Ooh, little first. booties for them. They make shoes, but just remember those rubber shoes keep them from sweating as much. Yeah. So if you're going to take them for walks and stuff, try and do it early and then take the boots off so that way they can they can cool down because they can't sweat like people. And I was going to say, and also for our seniors, the high heat can mm -hmm. also be um, dangerous in terms yes. of creating heat stroke mm -hmm. or if they fall outside. Yeah. Uh, kind of talk us through what our seniors should be doing. Yeah, and a as we age and people take more medications, there's medications that dehydrate you easier as well. So trying to stay hydrated um, for the older community can be difficult at times. Um, a lot of people don't drink enough water. Yeah. And so that can help um, reduce your risk of he um, heat stroke or heat illness, you know, um, heat cramps or heat stroke. Um, and so being hydrated is the first thing don't do any um, hard strenuous activity in the in the Heat hot of the part day, of the yeah, day yeah. you know between 11 and 6 is the hottest part of the day usually so if you have to do yard work or anything strenuous try and do it early in the morning or later in the evening when it cools down a little bit take lots of breaks sit in the shade hydrate yourself it's not just about water as well you need to make sure you're if you're sweating a lot you are losing some electrolytes so maybe a Gatorade or something as well in between the water um, but you know if you have elderly um, neighbors check in on them you know a lot of times we have a harder time regulating they have a harder time regulating their temperature that's why they keep their house really warm in the winter and they don't always realize it's hot in their house sometimes as first responders will go in because they're not feeling well mm -hmm. and it's really hot in their home and they don't even realize how hot it is oh, wow. so keep track of you know elderly neighbors and friends um, and be aware too when they're you're outside if you do trip and fall if you're helping somebody get them off the asphalt or the quickly. concrete quickly, um, people will trip and fall. And as they're trying to get up, they don't realize that their hands are getting yeah. burned. And so we do deal with second and third degree burns just from tripping and falling onto concrete or asphalt. Wow. So another thing is um, that causes scalding burns and stuff to children are hoses. Hose, yeah, the hose get hot, you the turn hose the water gets hot, on, and the water right? sits in yeah. it, and we've actually had incidents where somebody goes to spray their kid, and they end up burning them yeah. to the point where they have to go to the burn center. The water in that hose can get um, upwards of 200 degrees, oh and boiling okay. is 212. Yeah. So if you're going to use the hose to, you know, hose down your kids, make sure you run, run it until it's yeah. cool, good, so cool water advice. comes out. Um, because we do get those every year as well. Wow. And it's unintentional. Melanie, great tips. I, we could go on and on. I, I wish we had more time, but uh, those are some really solid tips. The thing about the hose is really important to remember because that hose just is going to bake in the sun if yeah. you turn it on. The first thing you hit with that water is going to... Especially as yeah. our temperatures exceed 100 exactly. degrees Fahrenheit, right? Exactly. So it gets to 110, 115 on some days. Right. Wow. Exactly. Really bad. Yeah. Bill and Dan, great job. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you thanks for, for being us. on the program. We really appreciate you. Folks, we need to take another quick break right now, but when we return, we're going to share some upcoming events with you. So please stay with us. Si puedo. Creemos en ti. Todos los días, millones de personas celebran su recuperación de las adicciones y los desórdenes mentales, mientras otras empiezan su viaje. Sé parte de ello. Comparte tu historia. Únete a las voces de la recuperación. Juntos, somos mucho más fuertes. Para información gratis y confidencial y remisión a tratamiento por trastornos mentales y uso de sustancias, llama al 1-800-662-4357. Mario uh, fue pintor más de 30 años. Cuando Mario me dijo que tenía problemas en el trabajo, que se le estaban olvidando las cosas, fue difícil. Yo le di a la gente que le diga a su familia lo que está pasando con él. Y quiero que me apoyen, que me entiendan y que me quieran. Welcome back once again. We have some great upcoming events that the councilwoman and I want to tell you all about. It has to do with summer and swimming absolutely. and the fun around the water, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So first and foremost, on Saturday, June 17th, we're having our summer splash at two Ward 3 pools. And I want to thank the Southern Nevada Health District for being a partner in uh, having these events where we're going to have uh, free entries for anybody nice. who comes through our doors, both at... Um, Baker Pool. Martinez Hall Pool yeah. and Baker yeah, Pool. Yeah. So it's offered at both. So Martinez Hall Pool will be noon to two and the Baker Pool will be two to four and there'll be music, some light snacks and refreshments and activities for everyone uh, regardless of age. So I hope you guys can um, save the date. 
That's June cool. June 17th. And then, Councilman, the very next day, June 18th. Yes, and prelude to celebrating our dads <laughs> on Sunday. Don't forget it's Father's Day coming up because we, um, we need to give our dads equal love that we give our moms. So we're going to have... Dear, dear old dad, dad. <laughs> dear old dad's day at uh, both Baker, well, at three pools yeah. citywide. So Baker, Garside Pavilion. You can go to any of those three pools from noon to four on the 18th. You bring your kid with you, and you get free entry to our pools um, and awesome things we're going to have also happening for our dads because our dads are amazing. Uh, we can't have healthy um, boys and girls without having the support of uh, awesome here, here. fathers. Councilman, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, and so, yeah, free entry, dads. That's pretty cool. Bring the kids. Get in free on the 18th. That, that's really great. And then, and then yeah, and then you got a, this is an important event, Councilman. We'll talk about this hiring fair. Yes. Right? So we um, support our schools through Safe Key programs and reinvent school programming, and we're needing to hire for both programs. Safe Key is before and after school care and reinvent to a certain degree is more structured uh, but provides also after or extracurricular um, activities to these schools and their kids so uh, there's going to be a hiring event June 20th and 21st and it will be at 833 Las Vegas Boulevard out of our human resource department and uh, you can bring your resume be prepared for on the spot interviews we want to make this hiring event easy for you um, 19 to 25 hours is what we're looking in terms of time investment 14 to 25 dollars an hour is the pay so there may yeah. be some seniors that may want to sure, come sure. back and work on college a part-time basis maybe. we have college students um, it's really open and accessible to folks who have a love to be with children and I think that that what should be something uh, yeah. if you have a love of children please look into these jobs and don't miss this hiring event yeah, we need you we really need you we needed lifeguards last summer this summer we need folks for safe key and reinvent schools and last but not least councilwoman this is a great tradition to django vegas it returns to django jazz <laughs> festival so if you are a jazz lover please get your tickets today it's june 24th it's going to be from 6 to 10 p.m at our magnificent historic fifth street school at 401 south 4th street so go online and purchase your tickets you will not be um, upset you will be elated to exactly. be part of this that is a tradition going back several years and it is always very popular that is a very popular event yeah. so people come out so get your out tickets before game. they sell out exactly Councilwoman, the show went by fast. We, we covered a lot of ground there, but we all The year wanted, is going by I know, fast. I know, I'm like, it's already June. June. I know, we're there. Wow. We're there. But uh, folks, listen, in the meantime, we want to say we always want to hear from you. So if there's something you'd like to share with Councilwoman Diaz, you can find her on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also contact her just by picking up the phone, 702-229-4623, or send her an email. Her address is odiaz at lasvegasnevada.gov. And she or one of her great staff will get right back to you. What, whatever issue you might have. So great work. Uh, we'll you. have you back in six weeks with another update. We'll be well into the summer. Whew, uh, by it's then. gonna yeah, be a exactly. little bit warmer. So <laughs> exactly. We're gonna be glistening a little bit more, I think. <laughs> right. So true, but uh, great work. Looking forward to having you back. Uh, and folks, uh, by the way, don't miss our next show beginning on June 8th with Ward 4 City Councilwoman Francis Allen Polensky. You can catch all of our KCLV shows now on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Also, watch for our QR code at the end of this show to subscribe to our newsletter. And don't forget, you can watch us live on the internet at kclv.tv. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time around.